Hey everybody, I'm here at PodFest Multimedia Expo 2019 in Orlando, Florida, and we're having a great time out here. You might have watched the video just before when I was telling you about it. I'm coming out here just to learn a lot of new things and meet a lot of great people. Speaking of meeting great people and building relationships, I just ran into and met a great friend of mine who's my new great friend, Brent Bartstra out of New York. He's a guitar player, jazz musician, but he also does a lot of great stuff in terms of teaching musicians how to build passive income so they're not living that you know, struggling broke musician life all the time. So I want to introduce Brent really quick so you guys can see a quick snapshot of someone who is leveraging the skills they have and building that into so much more. Brent, glad to have you, man. Dallin, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I'm all about just helping other musicians learn, you know, how they can make a living online teaching music, how they can start learning these marketing skills that so many starving artists that they just don't know some of these marketing and business things. And so I'm all about, and I'm passionate about helping uh, those people. That's how I make a living. I make a living through my online jazz education business, LearnJazzStandards.com, where I teach musicians how to play jazz, how to learn how to become better jazz improvisers. And that literally just changed my life getting into that from being a musician working in New York City you know looking at those empty spaces in my calendar like how can I how can I fill in you know more space with more gigs more students yep, yep. Uh, to now you know being able to live a life of freedom and uh, you know just you know, have that 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 freedom to have that income that I need to support myself as a musician I think that's absolutely fabulous as you guys know on the channel I'm a musician myself obviously not on the level of Brent but as a musician myself one of the choices I had to make very early on and Brent you don't notice yet one of the choice I had to make really early on is I wanted to go to music school. I was like, I'm going to be a musician coming out of high school. And my dad kind of sat me down and he said, well, look, you're good at music and I'm not saying you can't make it. But he said, what kind of lifestyle do you want to live? And after I went through telling him all the things that are really important to me, he said, look, it's not that you can't make that happen with music, but it's going to be a lot harder. It's a lot less likely. So you want to make sure you're doing things business wise that you have that kind of education so you can give yourself the stable lifestyle that you want, the things for your family, your community, the things that you want to do. So I was really interested to meet someone like Brent now who took the opposite route, went down the musician <laughs> path, but is still able to make it happen on the business side and the income side. So what I want Brent to do right now, Brent, just share a couple of things, just drop one or two nuggets for us for the musicians who might be watching the channel who check out this video on some of the things they can do to separate themselves just from being regular starving musician trying to make it happen to being someone who's able to operate like a business and build passive income. You know, I'll, I'll talk to the musicians, but really everything that I'm gonna say can really apply to anybody. So think about your niche, whatever it is that you're in, and just apply what I'm saying here. You know, musicians, we think so much about the creativity side. Yeah. You know, we, uh, we are all about playing music. I have so many friends in New York City who are some of the most brilliant, amazing musicians in the world, better than me. I mean, I can't believe that they're not touring the world doing amazing things, yeah. yet they're broke and living paycheck to paycheck, and sometimes not even making those ends meet. Um, but they're all about the music and I admire that about them, but you just need to invest yourself in some of those business and marketing things. And really, I've heard someone say, that, even at this, uh, this conference today, yeah. I heard someone say that as long as you have business and marketing skills, you're never gonna be broke. Right. Like, you're always gonna have those things. So number one is just whatever you're involved in, invest yourself in those things. Whether it's like what me and Dallin are doing today, we're educating ourselves at a conference, whether it's listening to podcasts like Dallin's podcast, whether it's checking out YouTube videos about your subject, reading books, all those things are really good things. Invest in your education. That's like the number one place I would start with for sure. Definitely, I think that's a powerful tip because a lot of times we go out there and we think it's all about getting equipment and getting the next yeah. guitar, getting the next whatever it is, but the thing that you actually educate yourself on can transfer beyond anything that you're thinking about doing and you can move those things on to different skill sets. So even if you're saying this is music now, you can take that to business, but that's things like sales and marketing that you're talking about. Those are skills that you can transfer to any particular field. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing to think about too, uh, let's, call, let's call this tip number two. Tip number two. Is, you know, whatever business you're involved in, is you know make sure that you're thinking about you know, this. Okay, this is a great example. Before I talk about the actual concept, if you're a salesperson yeah. and you are looking to become a better salesperson, you go onto Google and you type what? I want to become a better salesperson. No, you don't say that. What you say is exactly what you're trying to sell. You type in, I want to sell car insurance, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be a better car insurance salesman. So if you have a course, if you have a product, if you have a website, if you have a podcast, whatever it is yeah. about selling stuff, Make sure that you figure out what your niche is. You know, gotcha. Seth Godin talks about 
in his book, This Is Marketing, he talks about the smallest viable market, right? You want to look at what that smallest viable market is. Viable meaning that, yes, there is an audience here. Yes, there's people that are there to accept your content, that want to hear from you, that can be helped by you. But small, because yeah. if it's too big, you're competing with too many people, right? right? And so you always want to niche down. That's tip number two. Got you. Now, Brent, just before we got started recording the video, we were talking a little bit about some of the things that we were doing on your YouTube channel before. Give us one tip or one piece of advice for musicians specifically that they can start doing to make money, even from the music, that's not just about going from gig to gig. I know you started talking about building backing tracks or some of the other things musicians themselves can do to build more stability into their business model. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I talk a lot about on my Passive Income Musician podcast for musicians is I talk about using music education to uh, yeah. make a living online because that's exactly what I do. There's lots of other ways to do it, performing and licensing music, all sorts of other avenues you can take. Mm -hmm. um, but I talk about building an audience, making great content, serving your audience, and then selling things to them that can help them even further, like gotcha. courses and stuff like that. So if I were to give a piece of advice for someone who has no clue what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. just starting out, uh, that would be simply to start creating valuable content, whether it's gonna be for your music performing, yeah. or whether it's gonna be for your education, start making great content around your niche, your smallest vi viable market, uh -huh. and start making it and get started because I think that's what a lot of people aren't doing yeah. is they have these dreams, they have these ideas, and, and they're maybe spending too much time in the practice room still. You know, yeah. it's great if you want to become a better musician, and I understand that, but you also need to, again, start thinking about these marketing and business things. Mm -hmm. So get started, start creating some great content, start really helping people that you know you can help with your musical skills. Right, absolutely love that. Start helping people, that's a very crucial point. It's not just about you and promoting your music, but when you start helping people, put it this way, I heard somebody say it before, if you can help more people get what they want, you eventually get what you want. Yeah. Now, I know you're talking about all the cool things you're doing, your guitarist, all this kind of stuff. We'll link up to Brent's channel in the comments in the description below or in the YouTube card above so you can make sure to check out some more of the stuff he's doing on his podcast as well as his YouTube channel so you can get access to that. But real quick, I don't have the opportunity every day to meet a fancy uh, New York musician. Tell us just a little bit, give us the short one minute version of how you moved from just being interested in being a guitar player to kind of the stuff you're doing right now. What was that progression like for you? Yeah, that that's an interesting story. I mean, as far as become, wanting to become a musician, I mean, I know that you understand because we, we talked before about how you're a jazz musician as yeah. well and you're clearly really passionate mm -hmm. about music, especially jazz. And it started for me just in my small town finding this, this teacher uh, this small group of students that were into jazz music and yeah. I got involved with them and it's almost like this little tribe and it wasn't happening outside of that and it, there's something about the music something about how serious everybody was about mm -hmm. it that got me sucked in and then gotcha. I was just like for the rest of my life I want to be a jazz musician which <laughs> is kind it. of the craziest thing yeah. that you could really say um, but anyways I, I went I went to college for it in Seattle one year then I moved to New York mm -hmm. and everything was great except for I knew it was coming at the end of college you know what, what is a jazz performance degree gonna get you it's not gonna get you much and you know the colleges uh, the professors in the college you know they, they were talking about how to become a better musician not right. how to actually make a living as a musician exactly um, but I was a little smart I knew that uh, I wasn't gonna start making a bunch of money when I got out so yeah I was hustling gigs on the street I was doing all these things trying to get more students but inevitably, it's stressful to try to do that. Right. And so you're always looking at that calendar on the wall, those blank spots, how do I fill them? And I think out of that anxiety, in a way, out of a little bit of desperation, I really started buckling down onto this jazz education business I was working on, Learn Jazz Standards. Yeah. And that's kind of how that was born, sort of out of desperation, more than, more than uh, you know, wow, I have such a passion for this. And, yeah. and it sort of morphed into that. But that's, yeah, that's kind of the the evolution, I guess. Awesome, if you wanna hear more of Brent's stories, go over to his channel. Like I said, we'll link it in the description below. Last question for you, Brent, we gotta do it, we gotta do it. Musician is on the channel. What is your favorite jazz standard? Oh my god! You gotta pick one. That's, just, one uh, of, okay, I'll do it better. Give you one of your favorite jazz standards. I'll make it a little bit easier for you. One of my favorite jazz standards. I love My Shining Hour. Okay. Um, that's a great song that I just always go to. Um, I'll Be Seeing You is one of my favorite songs. Yeah. I just, I love the melody to that one. Gotcha. The harmony, the harmony, like it really has a lot of traditional jazz harmony in it, but there's something about the melody and the way it feels. Um, and there's some great recordings, both really old mm -hmm. and new, like Brad Meldow has yeah. an incredible version. 
Um, that I don't know. I just I always just there's something that connects with me spiritually, emotionally with that song. So we'll, we'll just go with that one. Let's say I'll be seeing you. Super. I'll be seeing you. You heard it right here. Brett Varshra, thank you so much for being on the channel with us. We look forward to doing some more collaborations with you. Check out his channel, folks. I'm linking it down there in the description. And be sure to tune in for the next video. If you like what you're hearing on this particular video, be sure to give us a subscribe, hit the notification bell, and if you like it, hit like. So we look forward to seeing you in the next video here on the channel. Thanks for watching. Oh. <laughs> That's not on the camera, is it? <laughs> it's fine. We'll, we'll leave it in there.